So, Gloria Bell is now in theaters, everyone, and it stars Juliana Moore, John Tatora, and Michael Sarah, and it is about a free-spirited woman in her 50s seeking out love in L.A. dance clubs. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is directed by Sebastian Lilo, who also directed Fantastic Woman, which won Best Foreign Picture, I believe it was the 2017 Oscars, as well as Disobedience, which came out last year, and I think Fantastic Woman was a solid film. Disobedience was a good film, but... How does Gloria Bell hang in there with the rest of them? Let's find out. So, Gloria Bell, first of all, let me just say this. It's a well-acted film. You know, all the performances across the board give it their all. Juliana Moore is singularly the most important aspect of this film because most of the film, if not all of it, is focused on her and everything that is approached in such a way is geared towards her. So it's important that her performance is accelerant, and it is. Her performance is top-notch. I'm a big Juliana Moore fan. I think she's a great actress, and she gives it her all in this film. And she is interesting to watch. I think that she is definitely giving it her all, and that's what I like to see. I liked the visual flourishes in the film. You know, there was a lot of cool shots with the cinematography. The score was also very elegant and free-spirited, much in the same way as the character. And I also liked how this was a short, easy breezy 102 minutes view time. That being said, this is a mixed bag of a film for me personally. So I like the slice of life films. That's why I like to call them where it's characters just going about their everyday life. Not many things happen, but you know, they just are going about their life. I think that it was interesting to see, you know, the characters get developed, you know, with all these little nuances with them going about their everyday life. But I think the problem is that some of these characters, they do things that we as audience members don't know why they're doing it and or it's never really explained. I'm not one that's saying, you know, spoon feed me with everything, but there's not really much information given as to why certain characters do this or this. Like, example, you know, it's not a spoiler, but there's one character that um, all of a sudden takes a trip randomly with another person that, you know, they weren't really being friendly for most of the film. And all of a sudden they're on a trip and it's like, wait a minute, you know, how does how did it get from here to here? Like, I always like to use the two plus two theory, you know, and then as the audiences make it equal four. But when you're given two and you're not even given an addition sign, it's like, well, what do I do? Like, there wasn't really a lot of information that was given so that we could think about it because so much information was getting thrown our way that we really weren't able to actually digest and be able to think, why is this character doing this and this? That's just me personally. Um, I think that there were a lot of odd choices that the characters were doing. And I'm not saying, oh, because I wouldn't do that. I'm saying because there wasn't a lot of insight given as to why they did what they were doing. That being said, it's not just the characters. I think that slice of life films, for me personally, they can go from like Boyhood and the Before Trilogy, where they're very insightful and interesting and great, to films like this, where it's it's okay. You know, it hits my check marks of being well acted, well shot, you know, sounding great. But at the end of the day, I wasn't entertained by this film. I wasn't enlightened by it. I didn't take much um, home from this. Other than I do have to say, I did like how you know, uh, people in their 50s were depicted as sexually active. I feel like a lot of films that depict 50-year-old and up, they don't show that, you know, these people actually are sexually active. And I think that's very interesting. But at the same time, I think that they could have done more with that. And they didn't, unfortunately. As well as, here's the problem for me personally. It's not a film that when you're watching it, you're washing over all these characters and you're thinking to yourself, wow, like, you know, this is an interesting experience. You're just constantly thinking, this is okay, you know, and again, I'm not hating on this film. I do think it does good job with a lot of the things in this film, but at the end of the day, it's still, for me, a ho-hum film that, for me personally, Gloria Bell will be getting a 3.25 to 5 star rating, which... It's the goal of Frank's hot sauce. Again, it's not a bad film. It's just, it's an okay film that I respect. Truly, I do. But it's just a film that, for me personally, I thought it was just okay. But again, I, I do want to hear you guys' thoughts on Gloria Bell because, you know, if you look on like sites like Rotten Tomatoes, you'll see like 95% critics and then audiences is like 40%. I'm just kind of wondering where you guys stand. You guys love it. You guys hate it. You guys kind of like me where it's in the middle. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below of Gloria Bell, as well as also let me know your thoughts on Sebastian Lee Lewis' other films, you know, such as Fantastic Woman and Disobedience. 
comment section down below. And as always, thank you always for watching. Don't forget the subscription, notification bell, and I'll uh, get you guys later.